Let's all stand and welcome our speaker this morning, teacher Salome Mudui, to bring the word of God. Let's appreciate her until she gets over here. Let's appreciate her. Kuja, kuja, unatoa. Aya, sawa basi. Wow. Praise the Lord. Buona sife sana. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Wow. Thank you so much, Bishop. That is amazing. I'm so humbled. Uh, we can have our seats. Amen. This morning, I'm so grateful to God. Indeed, it has taken the mighty hand of God to stand in front of you. And I'm so humbled. And I want to take this opportunity to thank so much, Bishop and Mom. Thank you so much, Bishop. When I look at them, I see like they just got into a forest. They cleared the bush for us. And that is why we are here today. They risked their life. They sacrificed a lot. And they heeded to the call of God. I ask myself, it was me that time. Could I have, you know, could I have risen to the occasion and taken the call of God? So, Bishop and Mom, may God bless you so much. May God increase you. I always say, as you say in this church, the rest of your story is going to be the best of your story because of what you did. You and I, that is why we are here. We can preach. We can hear the word of God. Our children can rejoice. They can have a good foundation because of the Lord. And I thank God this morning because if there is anything I was praying, even as Bishop had said when I was coming to, we were coming this way all the way from Rungai, I was telling the Lord, I pray that you are going to, the praise I am going, that there's going to be a very good foundation of our children. Because I was raised in the Sunday school. We, I, I grew in Sunday school. I grew in church. And it was my prayer that also the, my children, we also enjoy the same. And I thank God because I came to Deliverance Church Kasarani, where our children are honored, where our children are given privileges. And I was so happy that I could raise my children in such a, a, a good foundation. And I know they have a great destiny. So my heart is at peace and I'm rejoicing in the Lord. I want to take also this opportunity also to say thank you because of people who started Bishop for the vision of Cornerstone Academy. Uh, yes, I work here. I came and I can tell you I'm the, the greatest beneficiary. Church-wise, work, praise, and I rejoice in the Lord. I don't take anything for granted. For us here is home. And I want to thank God because of my husband. I wish he could come here, but he's up there. He's the man behind the, the screen. Make sure I don't, and I keep time. Yes, he's there. He's the lover of my soul, and I appreciate him so much. When he was coming, he said, yes, that is the guy. Yeah, that is a handsome man, and I thank God for him. We have been in this thing, marriage, for almost, this is our 19th year. And we thank God. We have gone through the test of time. And we have seen what the Lord can do. And in, uh, we are blessed of the Lord. Between us, we have four daughters. Hallelujah. Yeah, one of them is in high school, Gara Girls, in, in Form 4. And I have the three of them here. I have Brilliant. And I have the, the little, the twins. And I'm going to welcome them because we said, even if it is 15 minutes, this is their day. Buona si fiwe. And they will come and say hi. And as we say in the DOI, in Psalms 112 and verse four, uh, 144, verse 12, that our daughters, they are like beautiful pillars. They are carved to decorate a Paris. Buona si fiwe. This is their portion in the name of Jesus. They are beautiful. And we thank God for them. And they are, this is all about Cornerstone Academy. This is what we have here. Buona asifuye sana. And I know they are, they are for sign and wonder. And one thing I know, anything that God gives you, it is for the glory, for the accomplishment of his kingdom. So these two are going to say their names. My name is Awadi Mazamudu. Luke 2, 52, and Jesus increased, and wisdom, and stature, and in 
and favor with God and man. Luke 2, 52. My name is Raha Saramudui. I have a more river in the beginning. Genesis 1 1. Genesis 1 1. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once more. My name is Brilliant Wamboi Mudhui. I'm in class 8 and I have a song. You call me up on the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, your sovereign hand, my faith will stand, and I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves, when oceans rise, my soul Praise the Lord. Yeah, that is what the Lord can do. This morning we are going to share the word of God. Go with me in the book of Romans, uh, Romans chapter 8. And I want to thank you so much. Thank you for coming to church. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So thank you for coming. Anytime you come, you hear the word of God, your faith is strengthened. Your faith, you know, you are able to hold on because the word keeps, keeps you going. And we thank God because you will not live by bread alone, but only by the word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And this morning, greet your neighbor. Tell her, thank you for coming in the house of the Lord. Yeah, you are blessed and you are not going to be the same. Your faith is going to be lifted and you will glorify the Father. The Bible says in Romans, we are going to read from verse 17. Uh, Yes, you can project for us Romans chapter 8. From verse 17, we are going to read 17, 18, and 19. And then we are going to go to 36. Let's read together, church. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. 
We go to verse 36. For your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. Yet, these things, we are more than conquerors through whom who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, that's in Abana Sana. When I was asking the Lord what to share this morning, this is the word that God gave to me. That this is a time for the manifestations of the sons of God. You and I, we are the sons of God. The Bible says in John 1 and verse 12, as many believed in him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. And so this morning, as we are leading this word, I want you to get it that God, the word is that there is going to be manifestations of the sons of God. When we were starting the year, I know all of us, we received a word from the Lord. We receive our prophetic word that this is going to be a year of open heaven. And all the way we have come, we have come and uh, many things have happened to us. But I want to tell you this morning, every prophecy has to go through a test. Praise the Lord. And I thank God because I was looking all the way from January when we, we were praying and we were seeking the Lord after we received the word. You know, when you, anytime we receive the word from the prophet of God, and we, we feel so good. I don't know whether it is like how you feel, whether it is like me. Anytime I receive the word of God, and I know it's a prophetic word, because of the way I've, I know I've grown in faith, sometimes I always, you know, I take it so deep that anytime God says about a positive thing that is going to happen, because open heavens, we, we, we see many things. We, we see a heaven that is open. We see a year with divine elevation. We see a year of many good things happening to us. But also, deep in my heart, I know there is going, it is not going to be that easy. You and I, it is time to pray and to bring this word to pass. When I was a little younger in salvation, we are both, we, in our family we are eight, and I'm the sixth born. And we have a daddy and mom, and being, uh, for us we were taken to Sunday school. And we used to pray for our dad because by that time he was not born again. And I could remember, we used to go to church, and our mom was, we used to pray so much. Because by that time our dad was really a drunkard. He really used to drink a lot. And we could encourage our mom. And we could tell her, mom, it is going to be well. Because we could see what she was going through. And as daughters, we were really so concerned. And as we, were, we, we, get, we got ourselves into the word of God, all the time we used to encourage mom. And the, I remember one day, we could go to, even to meetings. And we came and told our mom, mom, it is going to happen. It was like we are telling her, it is going to be tomorrow. He is going to get born again. He is going to, to, know, to leave this, you know, this habit of drinking. And we could tell our mom. And I remember one day I told mom, mom, allow me to go to Acacia. Because after this Kesha, our dad will get born again. And so we went for a Kesha. And you could see us coming out of that Kesha in the morning. We were fire charged. And we knew this is the day that our dad will get saved. And I want to assure you, when we went home, and we really prayed. I remember as we could even pray and pray and tell mom to we pray together. And believe me or not, that night I remember, after the prayers we had prayed and coming out of the Kesha, that was the worst night I ever experienced with him. He came when he was drunk like a hundred times, and was, you know, it was so bad. And now I was like, God, we spent in the Kesha, we prayed, we have been doing all these things, and this man is not getting born again. And I was like, God... Is it, are you really speaking to us? You are assuring us, if we seek you, if we do this, if we seek you, if we pray, you are going to align things for us. Things are going to be good. And I remember one day when we were seated here and Bishop was telling us that sometimes the truth, before time, it looks like a lie. Because us, we do, although we are in this world, we do not belong to this world. Remember the Bible says in, in Romans 4.17, that we call those things that are there as though they are. You know, we call those things that are not as though they, they are. And we used to confess and, and say that our dad, one day he's going to preach the word of God. 
We used to confess so many positive things upon him. And yet, to the, it was the, against, it was all, what we used to confess, it was not aligning with how his life was by that time. And I'm telling you, it was not easy. Even in our village, it was not easy. Because people knew him. They knew him very well. They knew the things that he could do, how he could drunk and, you know, get drunk and do so many things. But I want to thank God this morning. Because after praying and seeking the Lord, our dad came to give his, came, came to, he gave his life to the Lord. Though he gave his life to the Lord when I was like 22 years old. But I thank God because God sustained him. He could drink, but because of our prayer, he could not die. And I thank God because my mom, she got the grace to hold on to the marriage. And that is why today I can tell you I have a family. And that is why I want to talk about prayer and I want to talk about the things that have been happening to us. Because we know after the prophecy, many things have come our way. The Bible says, as we have read in the book of Romans, that uh, for the, we cannot consider what we are going through. Verse 17 was telling us that because we are in Christ and he is in him, then even if we suffer with him, we are going to be glorified together. And we cannot consider the things that we are going through. These trials, there are so many. Yes, we are going through them. But we cannot compare them with the glory that God will reveal to us. The word of God is telling us. And I was also getting encouraged because I knew there is so much that God has spoken. It is a year of open heaven. Many things, good, good things are going to happen. But when we look up to now, maybe the things that have come out of your way, it is like the sufferings, the wilderness has been so much. Until you're asking the Lord, why God? Why am I going all these trials? Why am I praying and you are not listening? Why all these wilderness? But I thank God because remember when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says the, open, the heavens were open and there was a voice of confirmation that came saying, this is the son of God of whom I am well pleased. But the Bible also says after the baptism of Jesus, the wilderness was there awaiting Jesus. The Bible says the spirit of God led Jesus to the wilderness. And he was tempted of the devil. But also we know after the wilderness, Jesus was able to, to pray, you know, to serve. You know, it was the ministry of Jesus. Lily turned, you know, it took over. And I want to encourage all of us this morning. It doesn't matter the wilderness that we have gone through. The sufferings that have come. Because I know there are many. But also, the word of God, as I was reading the word of God, I was seeing that maybe some of us, we are in the wilderness. It has been so great. Maybe death has struck. You know, so many things. You have been going through a lot. And you think that it is about, you know, it is because, you know, it is like nothing is happening. But I want to assure you, this is because of the test of the prophecy. Because as a church, there is somewhere that God is taking us. And I was thanking the Lord because from January, yes, we fasted for 40 days. Don't you worry even if you have not seen any results. Maybe things have been going from bad to us. Now it is again July. And the church is here calling you for a 21-day fast. I know maybe you can be wondering what is all about this. But I thank God because I know after the prayers we pray, if you prayed in January, if you pray in July, it is not going to be the same. There is a stock that you are putting in. As we used to pray, we prayed for our dad. We didn't know. We really wanted it to happen there and there, but it did not happen. It took years, but it came to pass. Like now you may be a parent. You are praying for your, for your children. Maybe they are becoming worse. As you pray for them, do you want to end the layer? You know, they are really, they are really, it's like they are becoming from, things are turning from bad to us. But I have a message for you this morning, that God is about to glorify himself in your life. He is about to manifest his power. He is about to do that which he alone can do. Let the world prove otherwise, but God is coming to fulfill his promises. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 89 and verse 34, that he's not, he cannot utter any word that he has come out of his mouth. Any word that God has spoken, he has to make sure it is accomplished in your life. And as Jesus was led in the wilderness, I was seeing maybe even some of us because in the year of open heaven, things must change. It, we cannot remain the same. 
God must manifest himself. He is not a man to lie. He spoke it is going to be open heavens. And so we are believing in him. That he's going to move forth. There is going to be a transformation. And I thank God because in this church, thank God for our mom, Pastor Alice. There is a time she called us and she put us in groups of prayers. In all the departments, we were told to have a cord of three where we could be praying and encouraging one another. And I want to tell you, this is all because of the preparation. Because when the prophecy comes, it's no time for you to relax. If God has spoken great things concerning your life, my God, it is not going to be easy. The Bible says since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God serves violence, and the violence shall take it by force. Even as a school in Cornerstone Academy, we are not just relaxing and saying it's an open heaven. Oh, there is much to do for this prophecy to come to pass. And our God is so faithful. He is going to accomplish. And you know what God was telling me? Some of us, it is going to be, it is not going, it is some of us because of the way God wants to change us. And because of the way God wants to stretch us. Because of the way of what God wants to do in our life. Some of us I was feeling when I was praying that we have been so much pregnant with the things of the kingdom. You have so much that have been deposited in you. And it is time for you to give birth. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to give birth. And I was thinking even us, us who are mothers, we know what it costs us when you are so much expectant and the day date has come. And you know you are not able to give birth. Imagine umegojia, you know, nine months. But I was feeling no. The spirit of God was, was helping me to understand that we are so much pregnant and we, because we are not giving birth, God, something will be done. You know the way mothers we are induced. You remember the way you are induced so that you can have pain. I was feeling that some of us, maybe, and that pain, it will be pain to push us to our destiny. You'll be asking, why, God, am I going through this humiliation? Why am I going through all this suffering? Why am I going through all this rejection or whatever? It is because God is not through with you. And if we leave you like that, you are going to be so comfortable. You will not press on. You will not move. And God wants to do something. He's going to induce you. You are going to be induced. You are going to be added more pain. More pain so that you may bear forth. You may bring forth that which God has for you. The destiny that you are, God wants you to live. The things that God wants you to accomplish. Oh, there is going to be inducing. Utapewa uchungu. So that you will be able to accomplish the purposes of God. Because you have been so comfortable. And God wants to stretch us. God wants to do something. Thing. He wants to manifest himself. He wants to show his glory through you. And yes, some of us, we are not yet there. But because God spoke, the year of open heavens, as a church, I tell you, we have to arise. We have to seek the Lord. In Ezekiel 22 verse 30, the Bible says, and I was looking for a man who could arise and build a wall and intercede. And this is what God is looking for a man. Somebody, yes, who can arise and stand in the gap. And church of deliverance, this is the time we need to be counted. We need to be the men who are going to stand in the gap and say, Lord, as we speak it, so we are going to live it. Don't you worry what you have been going through. You know, because it is God. God is all, it, it is all about God. Don't mind what you have not received. Yes, it, it may seem like, uh, yes, it is not working. But remember, all this, whatever you are going through, whatever suffering, maybe joblessness, maybe money, whatever it is, maybe family misunderstanding, whatever it is, you cannot compare it. My sister, you cannot give up. You cannot give up because you cannot compare it with the glory that is going to be revealed. When you see that, when you think of the glory, oh, you hold on. When you think of the promises and what God will do, because there is a hereafter, you can only keep holding on. You cannot give up. The Bible says in Psalms, 12, 20, uh, Psalms, 100, uh, Psalms 24, I think verse 10, uh, Proverbs, that if you faint in the, in the day of adversity, then your faith is small. You cannot give up in the time of adversity. You have to endure to the end. 
Because it is through this that the sons of God are going to be manifested. It is through all these problems you have gone through. People may have called you name because whatever you said, it looks like a lie. But wait a moment. The truth is coming. God is going to show himself strong. He is going to glorify himself in your life. And I thank God because there is, so, there is so much in waiting. The more we wait, you know when you are getting prepared because of what you are about to birth, there, there is that moment of waiting. And it is through this moment when we wait, where God builds our character, where God strengthens our faith. It is in through this waiting. Don't you ever give up. We have to keep holding on. And the Bible also says in Romans 37 that the things, nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Whatever comes your way, the love of God is so much, it cannot separate you. God will see you through. You will not die in that wilderness. God is making a way. He is coming in for you. And God reminded me about this, this uh, woman who was called Hagar. Remember, when the time of Abraham sent Hagar away, Hagar may have seen as if it was over. But I could see it was the reason for Hagar to go so that he can see the greatness of God. The Bible says uh, in the book of Genesis, I'm not going to read, but Hagar, he went, she went with her son. They went to the, you know, it's like they went to the wilderness. And when they were in that wilderness and they were crying, there was no water. There was nothing. Hagar could not, you know, let herself see her son dying. You know, and uh, he just put, she just put her son a, a little bit away. And they started praying, and, uh, and uh, the boy also started crying. But the word of God says that God heard the prayer of the boy. And God came and ministered to the woman. She told the woman, behold, there is a well. The Haga could not have seen that well until her eyes were open. When her eyes were open, she was able to see that there was a well there. And she was able to go and get water and they could drink from that well. And the Bible says they did not die. And I want to say this morning, the same God who opened the well for Hannah, the, uh, for Hagar, the same God who opened this well, who opened even the eyes of Hagar, how I pray that you and me this morning, our eyes are going to be open. And we are going to see that much that God has for us. Don't just see a little, just see the much that if you hold on, it is you are not going to die. God is together with you. God is concerned of everything you have been going through. And and he's going to make a way for you. That sickness you have been in, it is not going to kill you. Our God is well able. He is so much concerned of the life that we live. He will provide. He knows the future of your children. And if you are said he has destined, destined them for greatness, my dear, don't you worry. God will take charge. He will, he will manifest himself. The Bible says in Luke 12 and 32, that do not, and that one you can project for us. Do not fear little frog. Because it is our father's kingdom to give us, you know, it is the father's will or the pleasure to give us the kingdom. And you know the kingdom of God. It has everything good. You are not trying. We are not trying to plead. It's already the will of the father. He has promised to give us this kingdom. And this kingdom has everything that we need. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's for you and me to align ourselves, to tell the Lord, give us, a, give us this kingdom, manifest your glory, show yourself strong on our behalf. And as we do that, many things are going to happen in our life because I believe we cannot remain the same. God must come and come in a great way. But also the word of God says in the book of Mark 8 and verse 36, uh, it says, you can project that for us, Mark 8 verse 36. Mark chapter 8 verse 36. Yes. For what, can we read together? Yeah, 
the Bible says, what can it profit a man? Imagine you gain the whole world. You have all the riches of the world. You gain everything. If there is fame, it is all about you because of everything that you have. But you, you lose your own soul. Is there any benefit in that? For me and you, it is time to know that it is time to serve God. It is time with your wealth, with everything that you have been given by the Lord. As David says in the book of Psalms 122 and verse 10, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the house of the Lord, I am going to seek the good. The wealth that we have, everything that we have, it is for the glory of the kingdom. I tell you, it doesn't profit anything. Even if you own everything, you own estates, you own, you know everything, yet you come to lose your soul. And now I pray for all of us. That we are going to give God a priority. We will tell God, Lord, whatever I have, the monies I have, the wealth, it is you who have given me. And I want to use this to glorify your name. How many know that our time in this world is very short? Today we are, tomorrow we are not. It is time for us to serve God. It is time not to hold on to the things of this world. By the way, they are nothing compared with what God has kept for us. Whatever God has given you, may you use it to bring glory to his kingdom. May our families, may our children, may everything that we have bring glory to the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because that is what God expects of us. There is nothing we can give to the exchange of our soul. We have seen great men with everything, but the only thing that the legacy they keep, when somebody dies and we know, the legacy, we only ask, had he given his life to the Lord? You know, sometimes you want, even you, you are not concerned with the vehicles, you are not concerned with the world. These things are good if we use them to glorify the Lord. But what we ask, we, somebody is not concerned of what he has left. Sometimes we ask ourselves, ah, I hope it was well. I hope he had given his all her life to the Lord. Because that is the most important thing. And let's continue serving the Lord. I want to encourage us as church. We hold on to the word of the Lord. That this is the time of God's, God's open heaven. It is the time of God's manifestation. God is going to come on. He's going to strengthen you. He will make a way where there is no way. Praise the name of the Lord. We are going to live to see this word of God coming to pass. And I want to ask, any time you come to church and you hear the word of God and it gets so deep in you, I know we rejoice so much. But when you go, just think about the word that you have received. Even today as I speak, go and think about what did God say. Because things are going to come our way. Our faith will be tested. But I tell you, after the test, the testimonies, you know, those challenges you are going through, that is what is going to be your testimony. Right now, when I go to my village, I don't need so much things. The people, they know, hey, their God came in for them. He came and saved their dad. Their dad is a testimony. And I tell you, that man, wherever he goes, he doesn't need to say much. Because of the life he used to live, right now he's a testimony. They testify. Maybe people have known you. Maybe it is your child, and you feel so human you feel so God and for sure you know you, you know what God has spoken concerning your child, concerning your husband concerning your wife, there are so much that God has spoken good things of what he's going to do but the situation as far now remember, I remember the word in the book of Isaiah Isaiah 54, uh, we are not going to read but the Bible says please tell me, I don't want to pass time, I don't know whether my uh, okay uh, Isaiah 54, the Bible says, Sing, O barren woman. You know, Ati, sing, you sing, you are a barren woman, but sing, because many are your children, enlarge your tents. You see the word of God, it comes contrary. You know, when you are going through hard times, because we do not live to the standards of this world. We are different, and we are not going to let anything of the world dictate the life we live. We were told on Sunday, remember to say, you know, to speak the word of God. This barren woman is told to rejoice. You are told to expand your tent. To the north, you know, all the, you stretch because many are coming. Many are your children, and yet you are barren. What does that tell us this morning? That the things of God, when God speaks, he speaks to a situation that is so desperate. That same it is when God is calling you, you are going to be rich. You are going to be a blessing. And yet in your own pocket, you have nothing. 
God comes and speaks to you that I'm going to make you a great servant of God. I am going to make ways for you. But that time, everything is working against you. Because the word of God, it, but one thing we know, the word of God will come to be true. I know some of us will be ashamed when we see the things that God will do for us. Because we never believe such things will come our way. But may we continue holding on. Seeing all oh, barren women. Because great, all, uh, great are you, uh, your children. Yes, you may be barren. But God is speaking to us. That is time for us to stretch. It's time for us to wait for his manifestation. Because he's coming in a great way. I know you may have suffered a wilderness. It's not a good experience. In the wilderness, nobody is there to encourage you. Nobody is there. Even your own friend, they cannot. The Bible says Jesus was led. You know, when you are led, you are the product. You know, you become God project. When you, have you ever been in a situation where people, they really come in for you. But wait a minute. The situation, Haishi, Haraka, they start, you are left there. They start going apart. You are just left there alone because now they, are, they can't handle it anymore. But I thank God for Jesus. He is going to walk with you. He will never leave you. He will accomplish the purpose. He will hold on to you and you will give him the glory. Praise the name of the Lord because he is a faithful God. He never leaves us. Even when things are so hard, even those moments that you feel no, I have to, now I'm, I'm, I'm just in the valley of giving up. My dear brother, sister, it doesn't matter, even this year, the, the few months that are remaining, when you hear you are being called for prayer, just hold on to God. Tell God, thank you. Give me the grace to pray. Because the Bible says God was looking for one. Even if Isaiah 59, verse 16 or 6, it says that I was looking for an intercessor and I found none. How I pray that it's not going to be said for us in deliverance. Let's pray. Let's seek the Lord. Thank God for the pastors and the good work you are doing, the prayers on Mondays. We pray. We continue seeking God. Because this is the way we are going to bath. It is only on our knees we are going to bath this prophecy. It's not going to be easy, but I know by the grace of God, this prophecy, the prophetic word of the year, the year of open heaven, these heavens are going to be open. And they are already open. The confirmation came to Jesus. Imagine that Jesus was confirmed. The confirmation, it came to Jesus. And maybe for the other people, they were thinking, after such a great, you know, open, the voice coming from above and saying, this is my servant. You know, you expected now the whole world to stand still and to start, you know, celebrating Jesus. But you know what happened? He was led to the wilderness. Because it is through the, ex uh, the experience of the wilderness where Jesus faith, even he himself, him, himself was molded more and he could do great things of ministry. And that is what is happening to all of us. Most of us here, you are in that wilderness. Not that you have done anything. God is allowing you to go through it because he wants to manifest you more. God is allowing you to go through that pain because it is through that pain something great will be birthed. And you are going to give him glory. When that blessing or that breakthrough come, you'll be able to handle it. You will be able to give God the glory and say, if it wasn't of God, if it was not of God, this one. I, have you ever seen people who have not gone through the wilderness? Hey, sometimes I tell you, a wilderness experience. And I think this is what all of us, even if you can ask our fathers in faith, our mom, they went, they have gone through so much to be where they are today. It is because of the experiences they have gone through that when you and I, we go to them, they are able to sort, they are able to give us a word. They are able to understand us more because we are not in the same level. They have gone ahead of us. They have gone through that wilderness. They have gone through so much and they understand more. And now I pray that you and me, we are going to, to forbear. We are, not, we are going to bear the wilderness experience. That's small suffering. I know it is not easy. But we, are going, we bear it so that we may be an encouragement for the generation to come. We will tell them even as we went through this and we kept holding on. That is why we are here today. Somebody went through this. That's why the Reverend Church is here today. Bwana Asifiwe. All of us, we have a challenge, even in our, in our homes. Our children are looking up to us. What will we give them? What are we going to tell them? We have to keep holding to faith. Even that marriage, even if it seems like it's not working, 
Please, my dear sister, don't you just think of giving up. Don't you just think of, I can live alone. I can do it alone. I remember my mom. I was like, you know, when you are young, your mind, you just think, okay, in that young mind. And I was like, and I could look at some children when we were growing up. And because of what we were going through with our father, I was like, oh, I think the ones who don't have a father, they may be enjoying life. You know what I was meaning? Because I was little. I was thinking, when they go home, there is peace. Yes, there's nobody to worry them. There's nobody to wake them at night. sana. And, they, and I was like, but I, I, when now, after growing up and knowing the Lord and looking at my mom and seeing what God has done, I say, God, thank you for this woman. She went through so much, but she kept holding on. And I remember a prophecy. She was given that uh, the same drunken man, it is the same man who is going to usher her to the altar, that they are going to do a wedding. Are you seeing a drunken man doing a wedding? It was a prophecy. Yes, it was said when he was so drunk and then he was told, don't you worry, the money he's drinking so much, the same money will be used to buy meat in this home. Imagine, and it was against. And I could see my mom holding on to faith in that marriage, not giving up, not letting go, because he was looking at us. He could see how we, I would like these children. You know, he was thinking, she was thinking of our, of our life to come. And right now, I am so happy because as we talk, my children there, if they know the best grandfather, they have the best. They like going there. Oh, because there is a woman who holds on to that marriage. There is a woman who said, even in this drunkenness, I'm not going to give up. There is a woman who holds on to faith. And I want to tell us, let's hold to faith. Hold on to that, to, you know, to faith concerning your children. What God spoke, it will come to pass. No matter what the devil is trying to do. And you know, what? the more you go through it, you know, it's like the higher you go, you know, the higher the, the risk, the greater the return. You know, the way you risk so much, the way you, the, the way you suffer so much, that is the more the glory will come. That is the more that the glory of God will be seen. And I see that, uh, that man with some things you don't, even in your estate, maybe the place you are living, people have known you. They have identified you with the names because of what you have been going through. They know you. There is nothing hidden. They know A to Z concerning your life. And, and I thank God because if you keep holding on, they are the same people, the same people who are going to testify. They will say, look what the Lord has done. This is the, the, the hand of God. It is the figure of God that have visited this family. They will give testimony because they have seen you going through it. So this morning, I'm go we are going to rise up and we are going to, uh, to pray. Let's rise up. As I, we are going to surrender to God. Just tell the Lord to have his way. As I give up this microphone, amen. Tell the Lord to remember you. And if you are not giving your life to God, surrender it to God. Surrender your life. There is nothing, there is nothing you can give in exchange of your soul. You need God more. You need God more. You need God. Nothing you can compare with God. Nothing, nothing, totally nothing that you can give unto, that you can, you can give. There is no reason for you to give up. There is no suffering that you can, that God, that you cannot let God, that God cannot handle it for you. There is nothing difficult. God is about to come in a great way. Just surrender to God. Tell God to have his way. Tell God to remember you. Let God have his way in the name of Jesus. If you are here and you are not born again, maybe you are in the valley of giving up. Maybe you can show us with a hand with a, we can lift your hand and we can pray together. Because it is all about giving your life to Jesus. Surrendering to God. Or maybe you are also here and you have some challenges. There are things you are going through. You are like you want to give up. You are like the pain is unbearable. I want you to lift up your hand and we are going to pray together. We are going to tell the Lord to have your way. Yes, you have been so pregnant and, uh, and because of the things you have been trusting the Lord for and there is, you have not been able to give birth. Just lift your hand because we will pray and God will make a way. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. We thank you because of your word this morning that God, you are going to glorify yourself in our life. That you are going to manifest yourself in our life. Father, you spoke that this is going to be an open heaven for us. And Father, we want to hold on to this faith. 
We know that God, you are faithful. Though this prophecy may be have tested in many ways, Lord, we want to hold on to you. That indeed the year 2019, it is going to be a year of open heaven. Great things are going to happen. Oh, God Almighty, divine elevation, it is going to take praise. We declare a change is a master. You are going to help us, my Father, to align ourselves to this prophecy in the name of Jesus. And Father, this being a month of prayer, how I pray for all of us that we are going to engage in this walk. We are going to engage in prayer and we are going to push, my Father, our promises. We are going to push this prophecy. We are going to push our breakthrough until we hold to them. Thank you because you are making us testimonies. As a church, you are removing the reproach. You are removing the shame for us and you are raising standard for us. You are making this church a testimony to many in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name.